Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney Morgan. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe, you hit the like button, you comment, and tell me what you think, or just say hi. The case that I've chosen today is about a girl named Cherish Periwinkle. And I chose it because I wanted to cover a case of like a child abduction type thing. Um, because I had a personal experience with something similar. And if you don't want to hear about my experience with child abduction, go ahead and skip forward like a minute or two and see where that lies. So I wanted to cover the case because I have three children. So my children and I, we went to the Dollar General. And as we were walking, I heard my nine-year-old daughter scream at the top of her lungs. My heart sank. And I turned around, and when I turned around, I saw a man who was over six foot, over 200 pounds, sunglasses on, and he had my daughter held like this and was running to the door. And I freaked out. For some reason, I threw my phone at him, and then I started running, and then my 12-year-old son, who was also beside me, started running to my daughter. And right before he gets too far away, he sets my daughter down and starts laughing. And I was thinking in my head, like, what the fuck? He took his sunglasses on, and I realized that this was one of my husband's friends who comes over to my house quite often. And I was angry. Um, he, he thought it was a joke. It was not, not a joke. Um, but at the same time, I was really thankful that it was him. Because if it wasn't him, what the hell would have happened, you know? Um, I don't take it as a joke. I think that it was disgusting. It was not funny. I have had nightmares for the last, like, six months over this. My daughter, she's terrified of this man. Oh, and then he was mad that he didn't get invited to my wedding. And I'm like, <laughs> because you traumatized my whole fucking family. Why would you come to my wedding when you traumatized my whole family? Anyways, so I know that she didn't actually get abducted, but the image of a big man carrying my daughter in his arms while running toward the door was one of the most horrifying moments as a mother for me. And then I came across this case of Cherish Periwinkle, and they were in the Dollar General, and he took off with her daughter, and it just, it made me want to cover it. So sorry about the long rant about what happened with my family on to today's case. A woman named Kimberly Hoy moved to America from Australia because she wanted to get a fresh start. But when doing so, she actually left her five-year-old daughter with her mother when she moved to America. When she came here, she decided to change her name to Rain Periwinkle. Kind of funky, kind of cool. I kind of like it. I don't know. Now, just a heads up, I'm pretty judgmental with this case, and I'm going to try to keep it, the judgment on my part, down, because um, there's a lot of things that happen in this case that I don't understand why this mother let some of these things happen. So, anyways, I'm going to let that go. Let's keep going. So, once Rain came to America, she went out to a bar one night. She met a man named Billy. And her and Billy ended up hooking up that night, and Rain found out that she was pregnant. She claims that Billy really didn't want to have a child, so he tried to convince her to abort this child. And she decided that she was not going to do that, so she went ahead and left him. And she continued her pregnancy with a daughter who she would soon name Cherish Periwinkle. She didn't have any communication with Billy. She didn't, she didn't talk to him about anything until Cherish was three years old. She decided that she was, she needed some help financially. So she took Billy to court for child support and Billy had a good job. So Billy, Billy really didn't mind this and a few years had passed and he decided that he actually did want to be a part of Cherish's life. So he was paying his child support and then he kind of, decided in his own head that he did not believe that Rain would be a good parent for Cherish to grow up with. So he took her to court and he was trying to fight for custody. And this fight went on pretty much Cherish's whole life. But during this custody battle, 
a caseworker came in and they wanted to watch Cherish in Billy's presence and in Rain's presence so that they could help the courts and the judge decide which parent would be most fit to raise Cherish. Billy was, was well off. He had a good stable job. He had his own place. And then they looked at Rain and Rain really couldn't hold a job she didn't have steady income she lived with a boyfriend and she also had two other younger daughters that lived with her the three girls and her boyfriend and the caseworkers decided that it would probably be best if Billy had full custody of Cherish but the judge on the case said you know Rain has had Cherish this whole time. She doesn't want to leave her sisters behind. So they decided even though it was probably in Cherish's best interest to be with Billy, that they were going to go ahead and leave her with her mother. On January 21st, 2013, Rain took Cherish and her two other younger daughters to the Dollar General that was right down the road. They did have to walk because they didn't have a vehicle at the time. But Cherish was going to, I think it was California, maybe, I don't know. Cherish was going to spend um, some time with her father, and that was supposed to happen the next day. So they went to the Dollar General looking for new outfits, clothes, shoes, stuff that, that, that Rain felt Cherish needed for this trip to go see her father. Do you see the similarities of why I thought of this? Dollar General... I'm so happy that my daughter didn't get taken like I thought was happening because this is horrifying. Rain's boyfriend had given her $100 to go to the Dollar General and get the things that they needed. So she got everything that she needed and Cherish saw a dress that she really, 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 really wanted. So Cherish asked Rain, her mother, if she could get this dress and she realized that it was too expensive and she said, no, honey. You're going to have to put it back because I, I can't afford this right now. And I completely understand how that goes. I'm a mom, three kids. Sometimes you have to pick and choose the things you buy. Understandable. Cherish had to put the dress back. But while that conversation was going on about the dress, there was an older man kind of standing off in the distance and he was watching them. So when they were, when she got done purchasing her items and she left the store, she noticed that this man was still in the parking lot. This man approached Rain and the three girls and said, hey, you know, my name is Don. I heard what happened in the store and I would be happy to get the dress for your daughter. The mother said that she was a little skeptical of the situation at first. Rain... She said that she was kind of weirded out by him because she had noticed him staring at her and her kids in the store. She said that she, she thought that when she walked out that the man was going to rob her and take her money. But then he offered up that nice, hey, I'll buy the dress for you if you can't afford it. And so Rain was like, oh, okay. So she started talking to this man, Don. But Don said, I actually have a $150 gift certificate to Walmart. My wife has it and she's actually coming here. Would you like this gift card so that you can get all your girls some clothes? So Rain was like, yeah, that's, that's very nice of you. Okay, okay. So they sit in the parking lot. The girls are playing. It starts raining. They're playing with their umbrellas and... Don's wife's not showing up. Then he tells Rain, well, my wife is actually going to meet me at Walmart with the gift card to give to you. So Don helps Cherish, the two other girls, and Rain into his creepy white van, which for me, that would be like red flag number one because um, there's just too many horror stories of creepy white vans. And we're kind of taught as kids, at least us, I know girls, we were always raised to say, hey, creepy van, don't go near it. But Rain went ahead because she needed the help, and they got in the van, they went to Walmart. They go inside of Walmart, and Don tells her, go ahead, 
go look at the kids section pick out whatever you need so they're looking at the shoes and the clothes and they're putting stuff in the cart well Don had only put one thing in the cart and that was a bundle of green and black rope and I'm sorry to rain but this is where I start to not agree with her decisions while Cherish was trying on other dresses and whatever Rain let her little daughter be taken to the dressing room by Don I couldn't I wouldn't there's no way in hell that I would ever trust anybody besides me or you know her father to take her to the dressing room that's crazy this is where I'm being a little judgmental because I don't understand it that's not something that I'm sorry rain but that's not something that any mother should be comfortable with a strange old man taking your daughter to a dressing room and helping her try on clothes maybe that's just my opinion could be let me know in the comments tell me what your opinions on this are because I'd be completely weirded out and I'd be like you know what this is where I draw the line this is getting kind of weird my daughters and I we're gonna go ahead and go you have a good day peace you creepy shithead anyways I said I was gonna try to halt my judgment so let's keep going Rain says that all three of her children started to kind of get cranky because it was almost 1030 at night and the girls hadn't eaten yet so Don said there's a McDonald's at the front of the store it was literally inside of the store he said so why don't why doesn't Cherish come with me and we'll go get everybody some cheeseburgers in court Rain would claim that she only let Cherish go with him because the the McDonald's was supposed to be inside the store surveillance cameras catch Don and Cherish walking to the front doors and somehow whatever he said he convinced Cherish to leave the Walmart with him so they he walks out the door and right behind him skipping was Cherish they got into his creepy white van drove off and about 10 to 15 minutes later a Walmart employee came onto the speaker system and said hey we're closing for the night so make your way to the 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 checkout at this point rain goes oh shit all right we gotta go so she goes toward the checkouts and looks at the McDonald's the checkout she can't find Don and cherish anywhere so she starts freaking out so she uses somebody else's phone because her cell phone didn't have any minutes on it this is back in 2013 a lot of phones you did have to buy minutes so she uses somebody else's phone to call 911 now in this 911 call she says some kind of I don't know just the way she puts it is kind of weird she's telling the 911 operator some stranger took my daughter I don't know where they're at um, I think he was grooming her I hope he doesn't kill her I hope he doesn't rape her I understand that all of our minds would probably jump to that conclusion especially being part of the true crime community you know a lot of the times that's what happens I don't know I just found it kind of weird that she was like I hope he doesn't kill her and rape her when I first heard that I thought maybe rain set this up but she didn't rain is giving dispatch the vehicle description the description of Don his name he said he's his name was Don what he looks like and the police began to search now the next day a woman calls into the police station and says hey I found a van in a parking lot and it sounds like the description of the van that took that little girl yesterday so police immediately go over to that parking lot and they find Don they said put your hands up get out of the vehicle Don was by himself he was also still wearing the same t-shirt that he was wearing in the surveillance videos from Walmart and the lower half of him was soaking wet and I'm pretty sure in trial he tried to tell 
the police like oh the, he, I sweat a lot when I get nervous or whatever the hell he said he tried to blame it on something stupid police weren't buying it so they're like why is this guy sopping wet why are his pants so soaked so their immediate thought was water Cherish isn't here he's soaking wet we need to find water so they went to look at all of the water sources around the area and behind a church that he had actually previously just asked rain if she had ever heard of that church if she ever went to that church she said no they found a crick behind that church and in the crick was the body of cherish police removed cherish from the water they took her to the medical examiner's office Don was arrested and it turns out that Don's actual name was Don Smith but I'll get to his bullshit in a minute the medical examiner had concluded that Cherish was raped sodomized and he used something probably rope to strangle her to death and left her in that crick so in court Don did what was typical of people trying to come up with an excuse that would lessen their sentence of why they did what they did he used the childhood trauma escape he said that when he was younger his father would verbally and physically abuse him and then when his father left he said that his his mother got real creepy on him actually and that she was also verbally abusive they were apparently like strangely close and she treated Don more like a husband than her own son I don't really know what that means but I that is kind of weird what the fuck? <laughs> that's a hell of a way to uh end of video I guess <laughs> sorry I tape up my backdrop because um, I actually have like seven different backdrops and I'm planning on changing them out uh, so <laughs> I went the cheap route and taped it. it it didn't hold up very well anyways so Don says that in his childhood he had suffered a traumatic head injury to the right side of his brain the right side of his brain. <laughs> oh my God. I never claimed to be a smart person, all right? My brain just kind of goes sometimes. <laughs> so the right side of his brain, he suffered permanent brain damage. And we all know this is like pretty much typical of serial killers or like, you know, really bad people. They tend to suffer from, from head injuries usually earlier on in life that like flip their whole personality and make them serial killers and, and just terrible people he also says that he was um, sexually assaulted by kids in the neighborhood boys in the neighborhood when he was like eight years old and around this time he starts uh, flashing people he starts pulling his pants down exposing his little dingling to children other children and this actually carries on into his adult life he he just he always did that he eventually would get in trouble for masturbating in public in front of children then he says that he began doing drugs he claims that with the head injury and the mixture of the drugs that that's what turned him into a pedophile now this man had like a record that went back 40 years from trying to mess with or diddle children between showing himself to children um, masturbating to children in public like parks and stuff he also had a few situations like three where he was caught trying to kidnap children little girls and pull them into his creepy rapey van the first time that he did this attempted to do this the girl got away she hid in a slide and then she went home and she gave the complete description police arrested him and he ended up being sentenced to 11 years in prison for trying to abduct this little girl a few years later after he's released he does it again he goes back to jail in jail 
the psychologist advised the, the judges and the courts and everybody, do not let this man out. He is a predator. He will do this again. He should not be on the streets. So what did they do? They released Don. And after they released Don, 10 days later is when he went to that Dollar General. And he saw Rain, Cherish, and Cherish's two sisters. So this case goes to court. And the jury went back for deliberations. They were only in there for 15 minutes. That's how you know you're a fucked up person. When they come back in 15 minutes, they had nothing to deliberate. They had nothing to discuss. You're guilty. You're a menace. You're, you suck. So they sentenced him to death. Right after this, Rain actually lost custody of her other two daughters, and they were adopted by her sister, who still lived in Australia. So she still doesn't, she, she never got custody back. Um, no offense, Rain, but with your poor judgment on people, I think it may hurt that your children were taken, but I... I think that was probably the best decision because they're living out their lives happy and safe in Australia with their aunt. And like I said, I'm sorry if I was too judgmental, but with with my experience with my daughter getting grabbed, I understand it's not the same. Um, I flew immediately into panic mode because somebody grabbed her. This mom let this guy go into the changing room with her daughter and then said yeah go toward the front doors and go get us cheeseburgers because we're hungry no that is a strange man you you don't <sighs> i'm sorry i'm trying not to be judgy please let me know in the comments exactly what you think about this try to be nice because like I said, I understand what it's like being a mom and having to buy things for your kids and not being able to afford to. It sucks. But at the same time, I understand she wants to take help. But you can take help from people without literally handing your child over. So, I'm sorry, Rain. I'm terribly sorry to cherish. I wish that her mother would have had a better judgment, but... Unfortunately, what's done is done. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you later.